In this video, we're going to talk about humidity and we're going to build a simple instrument to measure it. The humidity of the air is the amount of water vapour that it contains. If it's completely saturated with water vapour, like it is in a fog, for example, then it will have lots of water vapour in it. We usually talk about relative humidity, which is the amount of water vapour relative to that which would be required to saturate it, such as in a fog. So a fog would be 100% relative humidity, but on a nice dry summer's day, it may only have a relative humidity of 50% or less. There are many ways of measuring humidity, but one of the most common that's been around for a long time is to use a wet and dry bulb thermometer. In this thermometer here, we've got two identical thermometers filled with spirit that indicate the temperature. But in one case, you've got an ordinary bulb on the thermometer. In another case, the bulb is covered in a, a wick which is fed from water in this reservoir underneath. So this is the wet bulb and this is the dry bulb. And what we do is to read the two temperatures here and the difference between those two temperatures tells us something about the humidity of the air. In another example, it's very similar. It's got a dry bulb here and a wet bulb covered in a soaked wick. But in this case, we whirl it around. It's called a whirling hygrometer. We whirl it around so that the air passes over the dry bulb and the wet bulb. And after a minute or so, we read the thermometer, the wet bulb and the dry bulb. And then we can use tables or we can look it up on the computer and work out from those readings what the relative humidity of the air is. OK, now we're going to actually make the wet and dry bulb hygrometer so that we can measure humidity. And to do that, we need two identical thermometers, such as these you can buy quite cheaply from any shop. Or you can use another type, a smaller type, that you can buy from pet shops. They're used in Aquaria, for example. And we need to make one of them into a wet bulb. There are many ways you can do that. You can use cotton wool, for example, and tie some of that round the bulb with a piece of string. Or you can do what I've done here and use J-cloth and using some bits of electrical tape you can tape the J-cloth over the bulb at the front and at the back of the thermometer and then pour a bit of water on it and that will turn it into a wet bulb. So you've now got a wet bulb and a dry bulb thermometer. We need something to attach them to. You can use a drinks carton such as this and then pierce a couple of holes here in it, put some string through and use that to whirl around. Or you can use an ordinary half litre drinks bottle and tie very tightly some ordinary string around the drinks bottle and that you can use to whirl it around. So here's one I've done already. I've tied very tightly a bit of string around the drinks bottle. So I take the dry bulb thermometer and I take some electrical tape and I attach that, first of all, at the top of the bottle and then at the bottom of the bottle so that that thermometer is attached to the bottle. I do the very same thing with the wet bulb thermometer using another two bits of tape and then I suggest binding it around with electrical tape another couple of times to make sure that they're securely held to the bottle. So here we have the simple wet and dry bulb whirling hygrometer with the two thermometers attached to a bottle securely. I'm going to whirl it around uh, for a minute or so. Obviously to measure the humidity outside we need to take it outside and do that but I'm just going to do it in this room here uh, for about a minute. Now I've been whirling it around for about a minute and so we stop whirling and read the thermometers. In this case, the dry bulb thermometer reads 23 degrees Celsius. And the wet bulb thermometer reads 16 degrees Celsius. The bigger the difference between the two temperatures, the drier the air is. Basically, when we moisten the wet bulb, as air passes over it, it evaporates some of the water and that cools down the wet bulb. It's similar to 
wetting your finger and putting it up in the wind, you can feel it cooler. If the amount of moisture in the air, if the humidity is quite low, then the evaporation will take place quite quickly and that will cool the wet bulb down quite a lot. If the humidity of the air is quite high, if it's quite moist, then it won't evaporate so quickly and the difference between the wet bulb and the dry bulb will be smaller. Having measured the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures, we then need to use a table to calculate what the relative humidity is. So we measured 23 degrees for the dry bulb and the wet bulb was 16 degrees. The difference between them is seven degrees. So in this table here, we run along the 23 degree wet bulb row and we come to seven degree temperature difference and that shows that the relative humidity is 48%. We can also use this website and we can simply enter the wet bulb and the dry bulb temperatures and that calculates the relative humidity for us.